video, we are going to go through how to edit your fonts on your website. Now, I've done a few things to prep for this video, so this may be helpful. Go check out the other videos on this content. But the first thing I did was I created a design page, which is basically a page that I only use to design the website the way I want. So you see everything repeats. This is one section, another section, all of that. Now, you don't need this for the fonts all of this, all you really need for the fonts is going to be this here and the buttons. I believe you need the buttons, but you need this here to see what it all looks like and see if you like it. All right. So to do this, what we want to do now is go to design and then go to site styles. Oh, and this is the reason. Let me click into this. Let me just show you why. Because if you're new to this and you're here and you want to, you're like, I want this to be a different font. Well, you can't do it here in the editor. The editor when you're on the actual live page, just gives you the options for the styles that you already have preset. So you have to go to the, the options that you already set up. Let me get out of this and go from there. So you wanna go to design and then site styles. It'll throw you to the right side of the screen. And now this is where the magic happens. You click on fonts. Now here's where you get to work. Okay, there's a few things to consider. You could start with a pack or you could just go in and change the styles how you like depending on how you want to customize it. If you have a brand guide, they probably define headers and paragraphs for you. And then you could just extrapolate that to buttons and miscellaneous, or you could go back here to this, this pack and change it from there. Now, I'm just going to go to the packs and go through this process if you decide to do this. So the packs give you fonts that they recommend go well together. So you could see a lot of different packs here. You could click on one. It'll take a second. You'll see it'll change all the fonts. Then from there, you're like, mm, I might like this active grotesque. Okay, let's try that. Nice. It's clean. Okay, cool. We're heading in the right direction. Let's see. Let's try this. Okay, maybe a little bit too bold, whatever. Whatever the brand is, there's so much more to this conversation, but you could go through here and try out some of the fonts that you may like. So at the end of the day, though, these are all packs. And if we go back to the pack that we started with. So the pop-ins, this pack here is a dead giveaway right now that it is a Squarespace website. It is a very beautiful design. This font setup is gorgeous, like how it's set up, but let's make it personal. So if you go to headings, you click here and then you go to family and you click here. Once you hit browse all fonts, you have options of literally hundreds of fonts. Now, just to give you a bit of background, all these fonts get pulled from Adobe fonts and Google fonts. So if you type in Google fonts in a browser and you go to the Google fonts website, you could see a lot more of their fonts. Let me do that now. So here's Google fonts. And if I just click on that, you'll see that these are the fonts that are included on Squarespace. I don't know if it's all of them. I know for Adobe, it is for sure not all of the Adobe fonts, but for Google, it might be all of them. So you could go through here, see what you like, sort them by different weights and different things here, the different types of font styles. So maybe you're like, I would like to look for a sans serif, a very modern style font. You could see different options here. This is where Poppins comes from. You might be like, oh, I like Noto Sans or Oswald. That's a little bit of a taller font. Open Sans. There's a lot of options here. So you could kind of go in here and play with them. The cool part about doing it on Google side is say you like Quicksand and you click on Quicksand. Well, you get a feel of what it looks like in the different weights. But then it also tells you down here what it pairs well with. Popular pairings with Quicksand. So Quicksand and Open Sans or Roboto. You see there's other options here. There's a ton of different options. So you can go through them, click on one and go back and forth and kind of see what the look and feel is a little bit before you get into your site. I wouldn't waste, if you're new to this or you're launching your first site, I wouldn't waste too much time on this. It is important, but don't spend 10 hours on this. A quick way to get going is let's go back to the design page. If you're looking for a certain style of font, sans, you could go like that or sans serif, or you could do serif. And you'll see different options here. Serif is where they have the little, I don't know, I forget the correct term here, but the little curlies at the end of the font. Okay, so if I click on like PT Sans for headings, it's like, okay, cool. And maybe I like that. For example, if I like that, well, I could take that. And then there's also the weight. So here there's only two options. Sometimes there's more, but it could have a thicker weight, which might look nicer, all of that. So you could go through that process and figure out what you like for headings, for paragraphs, for buttons, for miscellaneous. Now, I'm going to choose some that I just like off the bat, and we're going to go from there. So I'm going to go in here and choose Work Sans and use this. 
as the intro. So everything is set to work stands. I am going to change the paragraph though to a serif to have a bit of contrast. So if I go back here and I remove this for a moment and then type in work sans, I need to reset. There we go. Work sans. Boom. So here's the font that we selected. It's a really beautiful font. Now I could go down here, see a few that work well together. Let me try open sans. So let's do that. Okay. So there is the paragraph font. You see it changed this here and it actually changed the buttons as well. And what is it set at? It's set at 400. Yeah, I'd keep it at three to 400. Let's see what 300 looks like. It's a bit light. So I'll keep it at 400 and go from there. Okay, now you've picked your fonts. You're happy with your fonts. You're happy with the weights, all of that. Now you need to adjust a few other things. So let's go back into headings. You'll see family is work sans, weight 700, style normal. Style here is if it's italics or other things like that, but just normal line height is 1.2. So I can't really show you what that looks like because it would have to have two lines here to show. Letter spacing, maybe in the future video I'll do that, but letter spacing. Right now it's 0.01. Often I just try to see what the default looks like and should be good. It was such a minor change. Let me do that. You see it stretches it out. Sometimes that works. Honestly, in most cases, it's a no-go. Now it's negative. So let me change that back to zero and we're good to go. Text transformation is if you want it like all uppercase or capitalize every first word or however you like. So in this case, I'm going to just keep it normal. Sometimes my work around there is just to capitalize stuff if I want it to be capitalized and go from there. Okay. Now we're looking at the fonts. The sizing out of the box to me has been really good. So if you go 1.2 to 2 to 3.2 to 4.5, it's actually a pretty good size differential. Sometimes I'll change this to like, say, three. It depends on the font. And then this to like a 1.8. So it's a little bit smaller and maybe this even to a 1.1. So it gives me more options just to have a clear hierarchy. So it's really easy to tell this is not the same font as this. Sometimes they feel a little bit closer. So there, I just designed all the headings. Now you could do that again for paragraphs, buttons, and miscellaneous. While you're working on this, if this is the first time you're doing it, you may find styles that you love and fall in love. You might be in the process and change something and be like, ah, I want to go back. So what you can do is during the process, if you're at a point where you're happy, well, you could hit save and that will save all the changes then you have to, it's a little bit manual. I don't know why they do this, but now you can go back and start that process. You're in that process again, but let's say for example, I change buttons to something I just don't like at all. Let's say I do it like this and then I change the formatting and it's just ugly and I'm not happy with it. And, and I'm like, oh no, what did I do? Well, I could go here and go discard changes and then it'll revert back to normal. So let's go back to fonts and make a few more adjustments as we finish up here. All right, so buttons, I do want to play, let's see what Work Sans looks like because I believe this is Work Sans as well. So let's stay there. Okay, I'm going to try that, but I am going to go 600. 600 could work. 700 looks great. I will change the buttons to be non-rounded corners, but that's for another video. Miscellaneous. Miscellaneous could stay as Work Sans as right now. I actually don't know if I have anything on the page that is miscellaneous. So in the future case, that would be ideal that I actually have that, but I don't right now. And I'm just going to leave it. Okay. Assign styles. Let's take a look at this. These are some other styles. So right now the site title, which is here, you, if you have a logo, this doesn't matter, but if you're not using a logo, you could choose the font here. So if you have a completely different font, you could customize that and adjust this to whatever font you like, which I'm just going to randomly click on whatever it lands on. <laughs> so there is our logo. And right here, site title size, there we go. Wow, there's our beautiful <laughs> logo. So I'm just going to keep it like that and you can make that adjustment and then header button. So if you want this button to have a different style, you could do that. So you could just inherit the button style or do it custom. Same with sizing. You could do small button, medium or large. What does large look like? That is pretty big. I would probably stay with small. And then if you do custom, what are your options? Header button, 
Yeah, so you could just basically change the size of that one button. But small works, and then it does provide consistency. So this button and this button are the same properties, which is great. This really works for consistency, giving your site a consistent, solid look for the user experience, which is amazing. Now, one thing I just want to mention as a quick workaround as well, there was a save option. That's one workaround. But the second one is, as you can see here, as I go through the page and I hover over sections, it will highlight them blue. If I hover over paragraph three and I click on that, well, it takes me into the paragraph text where I could change that. If I hover over the menu, it'll show me where to change the site navigation, where it's pulling the style from. It's pulling it from paragraphs. It's a little weird because it doesn't give you more options. It's just saying, hey, it's pulling it from paragraphs. Or if you want it custom, you could change it there. I'd almost prefer a toggle, but that isn't the point. So say, for example, I want this to be thicker. I could easily change that so the menu matches the look or feel that I want as I go along. And yeah, so you could go in here, hover over buttons, all of that, and adjust the fonts accordingly. So that is a rundown of changing fonts on your website as you are going and building your website. And just like that, you have mastered a new skill. Congratulations. If you got value from this video, you will definitely get value from some of the resources that we've created. Please go to spacebaragency.com forward slash resources. The link will be down below in the description. And there we have a ton of eBooks, PDFs, and resources for you, for your website, for SEO, to help you grow your business. And just a quick disclaimer, most of the resources, they're free. Please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. If you hit the like button, it tells the YouTube algorithm some very important information, but it also tells me that you got value from this video. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.